day and have it Friends, you say we have to pray and to pray ceaselessly in every occasion yes. and every opportunity without fainting or Father, without ceasing. Yes. Father, today I ask you to fill us with the Holy Spirit and lead us by the Holy Spirit. Continuously break us away from all the control and the conforming forces of this world that are ever trying to limit us, Father, to hinder us, Father, mm -hmm. to jam us, Father, mm -hmm. to stop us from moving forward in alignment with your purposes, your plan, your thoughts, your will, and according to thy action. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. In the process, as we get entangled, Father, we, we feel guilty, guilty, Father, and morally conflict. And we get ourselves, Father, entangled in ways that only your grace and mercy can yeah. deliver. So you release and sprinkle the blood of Jesus to remove all the guilt and all the shame and all the iniquity so that we could keep on clinging habitually to you. So we shall keep overcoming this world and the evil one. We thank you as you position us in this position, Father. You write your law in our heart that we will consistently delight to do thy will. You lay up your word, Christ, in our heart that we will not sin, trespass, or transgress against you. And you keep bringing our life in alignment with your words that our ways are forever clear, Father, and straight. Help us to have strong and fixed purpose, Father, that our thoughts and feelings and actions shall correspond with them. And we shall keep your chair in moving from excellence to excellence, glorifying and magnifying you. Father, in everything we will be and we will do, let our life glorify you. Let us live to the yes, maximum Lord. of our potential and let us help as many people as we can to the kingdom glory. Yes, Today we ask you to prepare our hearts and our minds to receive your word, yes, Father, Lord. that grace shall reign in our life. For yes, that is Lord. your call and your will in this time and season. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 In fact, if you don't catch the trick of this dispensation of grace, how grace works and what God is saying and the season and the time, you will find your life very frustrated. When I listen to Brother Chuck's testimony, all I can see is the acts of grace, and, I, and I'll show it to you in the scriptures. One of the things, as you read the Bible, you have to ask the Lord to open your heart and mind that you can understand his word and see where he's at and the season and the time and what he's doing, and how to position yourself in alignment with the word, or to lead you in alignment with his word. Amen? Amen. Amen. The word is like a blueprint that sets up the time and the season. So I want to start out the process as usual, reading Romans chapter 5, verse 21, you know, uh, just to keep us focused on where we're at, what we're trying to do. The last time I preached this message, we talked about the endless evidence, amen, of sins through death. Yeah. Amen. The Bible says sin reigns through death. And when you, as far as you can go when we look at Romans 5, from Adam all the way to Moses, before the law, during the law. Sin reigned. It continued to say, I just finished reading a book of um, George Mueller, a man of fate. And George Mueller was between, um, he, he, was, he exists in the 1800s. And he started up an institution known as the, um, the Spiritual in, um, Knowledge Institution. Scriptural Knowledge. Scriptural Knowledge Institution. And a church, I think in 19... 1834. And for six or something years it continued. That is one thing to say it, why he was there, it continued. But even after he passed on, you understand, I think in 18 in 1898, you understand, it continues and keeps getting stronger and stronger. So he continued to reign even after what? Death. Wow. And that's what sin did. And that's what grace has to do. Grace is supposed to be in our midst and in the generation to come and a generation during the dispensation and so forth. Mm -hmm. In fact, it got, it got stronger and stronger. Mm -hmm. But if you don't know to abide and adhere and eat to grace, mm -hmm. you see, many people hear about grace, but they don't quite get it. They don't quite understand, what am I supposed to do with it and how do I navigate the waters? Mm -hmm. You have to understand, there are principles in operating in grace. Mm -hmm. So I have to catch grace principles. Uh -huh. I have to catch grace principles. Because according to the scripture, because according to the scripture, just like how sin reigned, just like how sin reigned, with great evidence of death, with great evidence of death, so now grace must reign. So now grace must reign. With great evidence, with great evidence of life, of life. You understand this? Amen. Things in you are supposed to come alive. Things around you have to come alive. Everything that was dormant has to start producing thirty times, sixty times, a hundred times, a thousand times. That is benefiting man and glorifying the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. So that just as sin as rain in death, so grace, amen, is unheard and undeserved favor might reign. Mm -hmm. Amen. Also through righteousness. Mm -hmm. Amen. 
So sin needed death to reign. So, you see, grace needs righteousness. And we talked a lot about this last week. In order for God to start to, as you could see, endow you with grace, he had to bring you first into what? Righteousness, right standing. He had to atone for all your crime. So Jesus died. Jesus' death and you making him your Lord brought you into right standing. We look at it when you read Romans, Roman, Romans chapter, um, we read this the last, last week, Romans chapter 5, verse 1 to 5, it tells you you are brought into right standing with God, right relationship. Amen? Amen? And as a result of this position, I want you to catch this principle. It's a principle. Grace can reign because of righteousness. Just quickly, let us read Romans chapter 5, just a couple of verses. I just want to refresh our mind. Let's read three verses. Romans chapter 5, when we are there, verse 1 to 3, say amen. 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 Therefore, since we are justified, say I'm justified. I'm justified. justified. Acquitted. Acquitted. Of all my wrongdoing. Of all my wrongdoing. Amen. amen. And, and not just that, as a result, you have been acquitted. It said, now you have been declared righteous. Yes. Amen. And given a right standing with God. Yes. So you are declared brand righteous. Right, man. Amen. Amen. Notice that you have been declared, mm -hmm. amen, and you have been given citizenship, right standing in God. Meaning, yes. you have been given the position that grace can what? Reign. Amen. The problem is we are constantly blocking grace because we still kind of force grace to kind of go, well, based on what I do and what I said to Pastor Chan, what I said to Sister Jazzy, you, you only should come at this level. Grace is not based on your effort. Mm -hmm. Grace is based on right standing. Mm -hmm. You catch this trick. Yes. This is based on you are acquitted and you Amen. have been declared righteous yes. and placed into right position for grace. Amen. Amen. You, you, can you catch this principle, church? Yes. Amen. So grace must reign because of the position. It, it don't depend on you. It depends on the position that you have been placed into. Amen. You are the recipient, Amen, of the position. And the bounty God has poured out is called grace. Amen. Does this make sense? Yes. What brought a chop experience with the jacket is what? Acts of grace. Yep. Amen. B based on what? The position that he knew it. He got, I could have never imagined the things that are happening. <laughs> it is based on position. Amen. It tells me he has a mind to receive. Amen. He has a mind to accept. Amen. The favors of God. The blessings of God. Amen. The reality. And accept it as the truth. It's from God. Amen. Is it, and he knows to give the glory to God based on the position. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. Does this make sense? Yes. You are brought into right standing with God through faith. Then notice Paul. Paul is really trying to get them understanding. God, let us grasp the fact. You need to. He said you need to get this. What I'm talking about. You need to catch this. You can't kind of. Well, I really should. I should get favor, and I, and I, and, I, and I guess I should get blessing um, um, because I I went to church to this. No, you have missed it. I should get favor, and I should get blessing, and I should exist in reality because I'm in right standing. Yes. Do, 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 do you catch this trick? Yes. Through Jesus. Yes. If the enemy goes, well, why do you think you deserve this? Why did you get into right standing? Through the death of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Through his blood atonement and his resurrection. Mm -hmm. Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. You yes. see, these are the knowledge you're going to need to know. Because people are going to go, you're going to see a thousand fall into the left because they don't have the right knowledge. And they're going to go, how do you stay? And how come you keep getting blessed? How could this be? You have the commodity. You have the truth. Do you understand? Yes. I'm telling you, and you guys know this. Everything is being shaken. So everything that is built outside of truth will be what? Toppled. Mm -hmm. I don't care how good it looks now, how fancy it looks. If it's not built on right standing, I am guaranteeing you this. We are in the midst of the shaking. Mm. It shall be undone. You got to make sure you grasp the fact why yours is not toppling. Or you might topple it yourself. Do you understand? Yours will not topple because of position called right standing, established by Jesus. Does this make sense? Church, I hope you catch this. Paul said, grasp the fact. You could see the appeal and the desperateness of Paul for them to understand. That we have the peace of reconciliation to hold and to enjoy peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Perfect. He said you have this peace, the Messiah, the anointed one. Through him also we have our access, entrance, introduction by faith into his grace. 
that state of God's favor. Through Jesus, you see, God is the most generous entity ever to exist. And you have access to his generosity consistently through Jesus by faith. Do you understand this? Yes. You have to expect God's generosity everywhere you go. With every people you meet, with every thing, with every situation. Expect all things to work for you. You are the center. You, you understand? Of the interplay through Jesus Christ. Listen to me. What I realize God is trying to do more than anything else with the church is bless them. Yes. He, he's like begging them to grasp the fact. Now listen. Yes, you have been introduced to favor. And I am capable of fulfilling that favor. Yeah. It's not based on you. It is based on who introduced you to me. Called Jesus. And this introduction is for favor. Protection is a favor. Blessing is a favor. Health is a favor. Truth is, he just want to... Mm -hmm. Are you listening to me? <laughs> you have to... Oh, may you grasp the fact, Father. See, see the, the, the other side that we don't get is this. I don't care what bad you do. You don't deserve punishment. Mm. And I don't care what good you do. You don't deserve goodness. No, it's all Jesus. It's all Jesus. Perfect. We, we, keep, we don't understand that last part. We think we deserve punishment, and, there's, and we think we can make up for it and deserve the grace, yes. the favor, the blessing. Yeah, so I preach to them, deserve some favor. No! It's undeserved. It's by Jesus. Yeah. I did some bad, I should, but no! It's by Jesus. Yeah. It's by righteousness. Yeah. You've got to understand you have been set to right. Yeah. Not by anything you do, not your mommy, not your community, yeah. not your church. Yeah. By Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. You have been set aright and introduced into ceaseless, bountiful flow of grace. I find this awesome, mind-boggling. Mm. Amen? The Bible says, in this position in which we firmly and safely stand. Mm. you got to be strong in this position. Mm -hmm. Everywhere you go, and every, you got to be looking, like, what are you doing? I'm looking, just looking for the favor to be fall yeah. upon me. Yeah. Something is about to drop on me yeah. right now. Bam in my spirit. Yeah. Bam in my soul. Yeah. Bam in my life. Just looking. Why are you so alert? Okay. Hmm. I'm just looking. Why are you just restraining yourself in this position? Well, in this position, things just fall upon me at will. Things just drop into my spirit. Windfall just drop in. Do you understand this concept? Hmm. You gotta grasp this. Then you're standing in a state of alert expectation and in a constant state of what? Thanks? Give it. Mm -hmm. Even before it drops, you're thanking. Can you know it's gonna drop? And you have been introduced to favor by faith through Jesus. Does this make sense, church? It's the only, listen to me. If you don't catch it, the Bible said, so grace might reign. So there's a chance grace can be what? Might mean it, certain things has to come together for it to what? Work. We'll go back and read. If you read Romans 5 21, it says what? So just say, go, amen. Sin has reigned through death, so grace is unmerited favor, might reign. Which means condition. Mm -hmm. You have to be in right standing and you have to grasp it. In fact, you don't really need to grasp it, but it's good if you grasp it. You won't hinder it. But you must be in right what? Standing. No right standing. You have not been introduced to grace. Grace don't have to reign. Mm -hmm. I believe grace is fighting us all the time to get out of its way. So it can bring forth its evidence. Amen? Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Catch this principle. You just want to work. You know, just that, that, I just read that one verse, and I think we should probably just start worshiping, and I shouldn't preach anymore today. You know, if you, if you catch just that one principle, I've been introduced to what? The most ultimate awesome favor? I just have to stay in the position of favor? And things are dropping in my spirit, my soul, my family, my life. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. You just got to like all the dropping. Got some deal, go. Well, this this son, this person is going to do a lot of things for me. I'll drop them in your life or your house. Bam! There you go. There you go. You got a new son. There you go. There you go. You got five more sons. Bam! And you're like, well, I didn't plan for this. You got, I tell you, you're operating in grace. I tell you. <laughs> we don't like all the things they drop in. You just see it as investment. You see, you see value. You see potential. And you just, I, that's not a body. You, go, you don't know what's in that body, boy. Amen. I just dropped something upon you. It's going to accentuate your life. Yeah. Do you understand? It's going to have some value. He's always at it. Mm -hmm. He's always at it. So last week I told you to write five things down. You are created in image like this, the resemblance of God. Genesis 1, 26. We fall away. 
We were redeemed through Christ. We look at this when we had read all of Romans chapter 5. We are being transformed. We had look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13 and 14. And we need to shine like the sun in the kingdom. We look at Matthew 13, 43. Amen? Mm -hmm. I love this process. May we all grasp the essence of this principle. Now I want to show you something as we continue, because I don't want you to, be, to mistake the position you should be. The Bible says you stand safely or strongly or formally on. Paul is reasoning and showing them God's conversation with Moses. In verse 15 it says, For we say to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. Amen. Amen? And I will have compassion, pity on whom I have compassion. Amen. You got I am God. I decided what I'm going to have it on. Amen. And look at verse 16 now. So then God gift is not, amen, a question of human will, human effort, mm -hmm. but God's mercy. In the NIV, it's a God's grace. Amen. He goes, this gift is not based on your effort. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Or your will, how strong your will is. Mm -hmm. This gift is based on your position of righteousness, your introduction to me by Jesus. Amen. See, so because of this introduction, I'm having mercy in who I want to have mercy on. He go, I see my son, Brother Charles, and I see him in a position of righteousness. I'm going to give him the jacket he always won. <laughs> even when he's joking and he never think how he's going to get it. When you are just, you know, somebody had to say something, my I'll never come, you know. God, me this, did you hear that? Let's start planning now to get it to you. <laughs> Do you understand? He is always working for you. Amen. Because of the position. <laughs> the NFA said, because of grace, not because of your effort. But because of righteousness, which evoke or accentuate. You know, you know perfume is not really trapped in a bottle. You can't smell it in a bottle. Right. When, when it mixes with air, it what? Mm -hmm. It gets accentuated. It just mm -hmm. <sighs> overpowers you. Mm -hmm. You do understand this process. Mm -hmm. Righteousness. Mm -hmm. You understand? Summon grace to do this. Mm -hmm. Doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Amen. The gift does not, it's not a question of your willpower, your human effort. But of God's mercy, it depends, amen, not on one's willingness, nor on his sternness exert, amen. Like, like, like he's exerting his strength, his exertion, as in running a race. But on God having mercy or grace on him. It's not my works. It's not my good. Look at me exerting myself. Look at my strength. Look at my willpower. God, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. This is based on your position of righteousness. Mm -hmm. And me accent accentuating mm -hmm. it, amplifying it, mm -hmm. allowing grace to run. Mm -hmm. Do you understand this? Mm -hmm. I am sorry. You are blessed just because of righteousness, not because nothing you do. Not because the church you go. No. We base it on us. We are constantly yeah. forcing God to operate that. Our level, our perception, our standards, our desire, not the Ephesian, not beyond anything we can imagine or ask for. Mm -hmm. What we need to get very clear, my willingness in this process is too limited. Mm -hmm. My exertion of my strength limits it. You guys see this very testimony in my own life. My own will gets in the way. So you God, based on righteousness, can you just let grace reign? Mm -hmm. Just get me out of the way. Yeah. Based on righteousness, introduction through Jesus. Just let your grace reign. Mm. Just go for it. Yeah. Have your mercy as you see fit. Mm -hmm. Have your favor as you see fit. Mm. Just prepare for the drop in it. Mm. It just drops it. Mm -hmm. It just drops it. Mm -hmm. Do you understand this process? Mm -hmm. And things that are in the, in the grace just drop out. Mm -hmm. yeah. It just seems to fall away. You gotta take, where's that person? Where's that thing? Mm -hmm. It just what? Falls off. Mm -hmm. So the grace can what? Reign. We either don't want the things that in the grace to leave, or we are blocking the things that are dropping in. <laughs> so this is this process God has to go through with us. Mm 